Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I want to share a story that I wrote as part of one of my early books, Feel Happy Now. And it was a story, it's sort of an old teaching story. There are many versions of it. Maybe the most famous is by M. Scott Peck. But this is a version I wrote for my book. Many years ago, or so the story goes, in a time of great war and consternation, there was a monastery that had fallen upon hard times. There were few monks left, and they tended to squabble among themselves. Everyone was convinced that their path was the right one, and the peaceful ways of the past seemed little more than a dream. In a last-ditch attempt to save the monastery, the abbot sought the advice of an old rabbi, who was reputed to have immense wisdom and insight into the workings of humanity. When the abbot told the rabbi of the situation, he shook his head with great concern. It's imperative that you find a way to resolve this situation before it's too late, said the rabbi, for what you don't realize is that among you is the one who will deliver us all from fear and to love. The abbot asked who among them was the one, but the rabbi would tell him no more. On the way back to the monastery, he wondered who the one could be. I bet it's Brother Arthur, he thought to himself. He is kind and good. Or perhaps it's Brother Thomas. He's young, but already shows great wisdom. Or could it be... No, I I mustn't even consider that it might be me. On his return, the abbot shared the news with the monks. Although they were startled, there was a ring of truth to what he had said. The one was among them. As they contemplated which of them it might be, the monks began to treat one another with a very special reverence and respect. After all, someone among them might really be the one. And on the off chance that each monk himself might be the one, they began to treat themselves with extraordinary respect and reverence as well. As time went by, the monks developed a gentle loving quality, which was hard to quantify but easy to notice. They lived respectfully in harmony with themselves and nature. An aura of peace and reverence seemed to radiate out from them and permeate the atmosphere. There was something strangely attractive, even compelling about it. Before long, people were coming from far and wide to be nourished by the life of the monks, and young men were asking to become a part of their community. Within a few short years, the monastery had once again become home to a thriving order, a vibrant center of light and spirituality in the world. So here's a question for you. If you knew that you really mattered, that your life was in some way essential to the well-being of the planet, what would you do to cultivate your own happiness and well-being, to deepen your own sense of understanding of what life is and how it works, of who and what you really are? What would you stop doing? What would you do more of? If you knew that each person you met today could be the one, how would you treat them? I remember years ago doing an exercise on a, on a training called the Sacred Raisin. And we were given raisins, and we were told to treat the raisin with reverence and respect, and then to chew it a hundred times without swallowing it. And it was fascinating because we all fell in love with our raisins. Because we treated them as sacred, they became sacred. And in the same way, anyone and anything you treat with reverence becomes sacred. And that includes both you, and it includes your life. There's a quote by George Bernard Shaw that I've been obsessed with lately. And I normally just quote the first part, but I, I want to share the whole quote. This is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being thoroughly worn out before you were thrown on the scrap heap, the being a force of nature, instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as long as I can live, it is my privilege to do for it what I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I have got hold of for the moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing on to future generations. Or to say the same thing in less words, I'll share one last quote from Marianne Williamson. God heard us. He sent help. He sent you.
with all my love. Have fun. Learn heaps. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I'll talk to you soon.